this one particularly it is again a segmented uh, virus uh, negative chains and the family is uh, orthomycoviridae so the paramycjo it is uh, set by the mucous membrane uh, but here the orthomycjo it is the virus infections that truly occur in the mucous epithelium so this include the uh, the the disease influenza and we'll be focusing only on the influenza under this category as because you know uh, similar to that the present day pandemic this influenza uh, so many pandemics occur in the human history and as a cause of major disease and uh, death and mortality among human and uh, very recently as you know it become an uh, emerging issues in uh, poultry where the h5n1 infection uh, that what we call as the bird flu it's an influenza virus under this autonomic zoopiridae family okay of course there are many members i tried to uh, crop it uh, some of it uh, showing it as a classification just for your information only i understand it is not possible to remember uh, everything so uh, the family orthomyx viridae the genus alpha beta delta and gamma these are uh, the uh, genuses that include the influenza viruses and this influenza a b uh, c and d uh, are the different four different type of influenza viruses and uh, we'll be mainly focusing on the influenza a virus uh, associated with the disease however uh, many new members has been uh, explored recently so if you find this is uh, one kind of disease influenza uh, which are uh, affecting varieties of animal species including the human human is also become a target so as a result uh, it is quite alarming that uh, uh, that the, from animal uh, to human or human to animal transmission is very well possible so the disease is having utmost genetic importance so this uh, influenza virus is of course uh, the one thing we must uh, understand all the time is that um, you know, many animal species including the humans we harbor this uh, virus in our respiratory passages without causing severe disease we suffer from seasonal flu and uh, one of the agent of seasonal flu is influenza out of many rhinoviruses and other things adenoviruses so influenza also associated with seasonal flu but some of the influenza viruses causes very severe form that may lead to low scale mortality so we'll be focusing on uh, this uh, group of viruses so what uh, we used to say is that uh, because of our common receptors mainly the salicylic acid receptor this virus they adopt for infection and salicylic acids are ubiquitously present in all uh, all animal species and human so as a result you'll find the influenza they can uh, infect many animal species and it can be transmitted from one to the other this is the pictures given by who very clearly indicate the central population is showing that this is the free range uh, bird more particularly geese duck they are mainly act as a reservoir in the environment and they they can be transmitted from each other this understanding is uh, very much essential at your part anybody if you ask ask you uh, like why we are so much concerned about the influenza because influenza can in fact uh, um, uh, many animal species including the human and uh, uh, can be transmitted from each other and easily it get adapted from one species to the other and can cause a severe disease problem this is one second is uh, what we are going to discuss the later slides about this uh, genetic recombination so in the history all of you have heard about the spanish flu asian flu hong kong flu just see the uh, impact 20 to 40 million deaths occurred throughout the globe in 1918 just the time of first world war where the spanish flu it's the h1n1 and no it's the uh, measure uh, uh, 
uh, virus that infecting pig and somehow uh, it has adopted to the human and become a severe disease problem. Yeah, you know, like um, the most of the world experts were speculating about the flu pandemic in the recent times. However, all of a sudden this uh, corona pandemics appear, but now also people are very really much skeptical. It's like if the flu pandemic occurs, which we have seen in earlier time, it will be much more severe than what we observe right now because uh, that's uh, just two uh, respiratory pathogens and it, it disseminated so fastly into the population. It's within seven days, the half of the world population may get infected. So that's the intensity. That's why the government is taking maximum precautions that this uh, bird flu, the avian influenza, should not be adapted to the human and should not cause any pandemic in human. However, uh, we uh, encountered a lot many cases of uh, uh, bird flu virus infection in human. Uh, however, uh, it has not led to any pandemic situation. So, um, coming to the genetic characteristics, we are much more interested to uh, know about the virus here. You'll find here uh, the helical nucleic acid symmetry and their pleomorphic envelope viruses. So, uh, the size uh, varies. Um, some are uh, bigger, even some of the 2000 nanometer, also the filamentous form has been identified. So they are um, pleomorphic viruses, helical symmetry, and the genome is a negative same single standard RNA, and it is segmented. Please note it down, the word segmented. The influenza genome is segmented. So the influenza virus A, which are, uh, we uh, will be taking more uh, emphasis, uh, that is having eight segment. However, C is having uh, seven extra different segments we could see in the different uh, uh, genus. However, the influenza A virus is having the eight segment. That means the entire uh, genes are distributed in seven different segments of this uh, single stranded RNA virus, negative sense RNA virus. Okay. So, uh, this virus is famously known to have a um, very important uh, glycoprotein spikes on each envelope, just like the corona envelope uh, spike. Here also they have two important glycoprotein spikes, uh, as called as the hemagglutinin and neuraminidase, uh, as we call H and N. And the, the description of the virus, the typing of the virus is mainly based on the antigenic structure of H and N. Uh, if you can uh, go through the previous slides, you can see that the H1, N1, H, 2N2, H3N2. These are the hemagglutin in a neuraminidase uh, antigenic structures and all the influenza viruses are described in terms of this two major glycoprotein spike. Of course, they have many other uh, structures on this uh, surface, but these two are uh, important, uh, both in terms of virus infection, because this hemagglutinin uh, helps in attachment to the host cell to initiate the infection, as well as uncoating process, this uh, hemagglutinin is essentially needed. However, at the same time, the neuraminidase uh, it helps the virus to come out of the infected host cell. So both are uh, very much important to establish infections. Uh, so, um, they are called as a hemagglutinin because it can cause agglutination of RBCs of certain species. So uh, these are some of the electron microscopic picture of uh, the influenza viruses. You can see different shape and size, and these are the spikes and peplomeres on this envelope. Okay. So if you go for a close look to the virus uh, structure, it's a schematic diagram, then we can see the very prominent uh, hemagglutinin uh, spikes are projected on the surface of the virus and they are encored to the uh, envelope of the virus, okay? In no way they are related to the capsids. They are simply encoring to the envelope layer of the uh, host uh, cells at the time of uh, release. So this uh, hemagglutinin almost, uh, if you see a ratio of hemagglutinin and neuraminidase, you'll find uh, the hemagglutinin four, neuraminidase one, four is to one ratio. That means uh, the predominant is the hemagglutinin on the surface of the uh, virus, okay? These two envelope glycoproteins. 
um, is important uh, for establishment of infections. Okay. However, some other like they have two different type of matrix protein. One is called as the M2 ion channel proteins, and they are essentially needed for encapsidations inside the endosomes. And second is the matrix. As you know, this is a matrix layer which gives additional rigidity to the virus structures. However, the nucleocapsids, the helical nucleocapsids are arranged uh, in, a, uh, in a helical fashion where all the segments of the nucleic acids uh, remain inside. And uh, along with this nucleic acid, they must process the RNA polymerase. They have the negative sense RNA viruses. That is why what they need, they must possess the RNA dependent RNA polymerase enzyme. So in the form of three molecules, um, protein, basic protein two and no, acidic protein one, uh, that RNA polymerase, they remain uh, attached to the nucleic acid inside the nucleus structures, okay? So this is, uh, beside this, the nucleocapsid proteins, uh, showing it here. Moreover, it is having an interesting uh, nuclear uh, mm, uh, migratory protein is called as the NIP. Uh, this uh, NIP protein helps the nucleic acid to migrate inside the uh, nucleus. As you know, this is another RNA virus uh, examples where uh, the virus replication takes place in the um, nucleus of uh, infected host cell. So in the previous uh, classes, we discussed about the Borna disease. So Borna and the influenza, these are the two virus which uh, the replication takes place in the uh, nucleus of infected host cell. These two are the exception. Otherwise, all RNA viruses, you know, they replicate in the cytoplasm of infected uh, host cell uh, with the exception of influenza and Borna virus. So uh, here also in uh, utilizing those nuclear uh, export protein, um, then the nucleic acids, they migrate to the uh, nucleus of the infected host cell. This is another schematic diagram just for making your understanding about the structures uh, well. This, I put it here. Mm. So the neuraminidase, it is an, again uh, uh, termed to be the receptor destroying enzyme. Hemagglutinin in the binding the receptor, but neuraminidase can destroy the receptor. So uh, that helps in release of the virus, uh, newly formed virus from the infected host cell uh, <coughs> by uh, backing process. So um, as it is an envelope virus, they are, this information is important for us. They are sensitive to each and other lipid solvent, similar to that of the uh, coronaviruses like uh, uh, alcohol base or detergents readily inactivate the virus. If anybody asks you why it's so, the simple answer will be that this as in scan readily dissolve the envelope layer, which is made up of phospholipids. So any lipid solvents will readily inactivate the virus, right? So there's a not a, a very sturdy virus, so you readily inactivate that at 56 and then 30 minutes. And um, unstable the room temperature and the pH three and these are some of the basic characteristics uh, of the virus. Okay. Now coming to the replications here, very shortly we'll talk. But this is interesting things. It's an example of RNA virus that replicates in the nucleus. Of course, the protein synthesis definitely they will take place in the cytoplasm. However, the genomic replications. Uh, uh, all the transcription factors are available in the nucleus. That is why they uh, prefer to grow and replicate in the nucleus of the infected host cell. Okay, so this exception always remember. Again, I'm repeating among the RNA virus, the Borna and the influenza virus, they exceptionally replicate in the nucleus of the host cell, right? Whereas all RNA viruses, they replicate in the cytoplasm of infected host cell. So once these replications will be over, then finally they release by budding process as because they are the um, envelope viruses and they carry the cytoplasmic uh, membrane as an envelope. And in this cytoplasmic membrane, you will find the glycoprotein spikes. During this replication process, the z and neuraminidase, they passes through this uh, Golgi system and finally they remain encored here. And from this side, the viruses, they comes out of the host cell, okay? 
Uh, this part uh, will skip it. Yeah, this is another picture so showing how this whole replications and the uh, nuclear part of replication takes place inside the host cell. Fine. Now coming to the uh, the the process of uh, cultivation. So the viruses again very easily we can. Uh, uh, grow and uh, multiply and, uh, in, the, in the laboratory by using the embryo and the chicken egg. Okay, this is the uh, very easy systems where we can inoculate by allantoic or amniotic cavity root of inoculation. This is the uh, allantoic cavity and this is the amniotic cavity. I guess the previous class I already explained this picture. So by injecting the virus to this allantoic cavity, uh, they readily grows here. And once the virus growth will take place within the 48 hours, we can just detect the growth of the virus by performing the uh, test like hemagglutination test. So it is the most easiest test to detect the presence of hemagglutinating virus in any samples, including the Olympic fluid. So uh, this is a uh, very easy process. Secondly, we have the cell culture systems where easily we can propagate the virus and uh, in a high titer we can uh, isolate the virus and can be detected by the secondary laboratory uh, test like hemagglutination, AZID, we can perform it, okay? So, um, this is about the uh, replications of and, uh, propagation and isolation of uh, influenza viruses. Now coming to the important this uh, uh, informations about the antigenic property. As you know, um, on the basis of uh, this hemagglutinin and neuraminidase, these two, I, as I said that this is H and N in the ratio of four is to one is present on the surface and H is the most predominant uh, glycoprotein spike. Uh, on the basis of these two antigenic structures, all the influenza viruses are described uh, in terms of uh, the serotypes, as uh, as on today's day, there are 18 different H antigens were detected and 11 N. Uh, my dear student, uh, let me tell you, most of the textbooks you referred or even to our previous classes, then you'll find there are 16 H and 9 N types were there, but uh, it has the number increase up to 18 and 11. Please note it down and correct it, okay? So there are 18 different hemagglutinin types, antigenic uh, types were identified among the influenza viruses, and 11 uh, neuraminidase types were identified uh, among the different types of influenza viruses. And the influenza viruses, they may appear in any combination of this 18H or 11N. For example, H1N1, H3N2, H5N1, you know this is the most uh, um, uh, pathogenic influenza viruses, uh, even H1N1 that causes swine flu in human. Similarly, also it causes influenza in pig. So H5N1 uh, present situation, it is causing a severe disease in poultry. Um, uh, we call it a bird flu infection. However, it is quite interesting. As I said that, these typings used to change time to time because of a very peculiar phenomenon that we see among the influenza viruses or among the segmented RNA viruses. It is the genetic reassortment. You know, like in the recent uh, uh, bird flu outbreaks that hit our country last year, the type was not H5N1, it is H5N8. The M neuraminidase types, uh, uh, these times it is appearing in a different way and causing large scale mortality in poultry. Okay, so please record it, 18H and 11M type. Previously it was 16H and 9M, now it has been increased up to this number, okay? So when we talk about the influenza viruses, these two words we should be familiar, I guess already it has been discussed for uh, refreshing your information and ideas. Uh, let us uh, discuss once again, what do you mean by antigenic sifting and drifting, okay? So sifting is a major phenomenon where the whole structure gets sifted from one to the other. It's a major event that takes place. Antigenic changes, antigenic structure gets changes. In terms, again, if you see, the genome gets changed because of genetic reassortment among the uh, closely related influenza viruses. So it is a 
major event because of exchange of genetic information among two influenza viruses infecting the same cell the antigenic structure of the progeny virus may get changed or shifted to a new one that is what we call as the antigenic shifting so whenever antigenic shifting will occur then previous antibodies effective against the virus prevailing in the society will not act and not able to protect this new virus as a result the fresh outbreak is inevitable however drifting referred to a slight change in the uh, nucleotide particularly uh, the point mutation if it is occurred then it may lead to uh, a slight change in the antigenic structures of course that is also equally important in terms of influenza virus uh, protections by uh, the, the immune system so uh, at this point again i would like to uh, refer or uh, should i ask uh, equations uh, uh, why the rate of mutation is higher among RNA virus than that of DNA virus. Please, anyone. Mohit Gupta, are you here? Mohit Gupta. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, what might be the case? Like uh, the, 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 the rate of mutation is higher among RNA virus than that of the DNA virus. Why it is so? Why it is so? Yeah, any idea? Say yes no, or no. Sir. No idea. Anybody want to try? Taru, Anku, are you here? Yes, sir. Yeah, any, any answer? Why the rate of mutation is higher among RNA viruses than that of DNA viruses? No idea. Uh, Brukes Mara? Yes, sir. Yeah. What is your sir, idea? Maybe, sir, maybe, uh, sir, sir, maybe, sir, DNA is more stable than RNA. Sir. That's why. Not, no, no. It's not about the stability of DNA and RNA virus. Let me tell you. It is related to the polymerase enzyme. Okay. The, uh, the RNA polymerase enzyme, RNA polymerase enzyme does not have the proofreading capacity. You can note it down. DNA polymerase enzyme is having the proofreading capacity. That means inside our body, we are having the DNA polymerase enzyme. This DNA polymerase enzyme, when they synthesize a new strand of DNA at the phase of replication, once a new DNA molecule will form, this enzyme will proofread it whether every nucleotide has been properly copied or not. That is called proofreading capacity. DNA polymerase enzyme is having the proofreading capacity. As a result, once a new molecule is formed, then they will cross check it whether it has properly formed or not. That property is having among DNA polymerase enzyme. However, this RNA polymerase enzyme does not have proofreading capacity. Once it will copy a RNA into an another RNA molecule, they will never go back and check it whether it is correct or not. As a result, the mutation is higher among RNA viruses. It says that every 10 to give a 7 to 8 uh, uh, replication cycle, one mutation you will see among RNA. However, in case of the DNA, it is 10 to do 14 to uh, say 11 to 14, like that way. Is it clear? Okay, please remember, right? So, rate of mutation is higher among RNA virus than that of DNA virus. That is always true, okay? But at the same time, among these segmented RNA viruses, the phenomenon of genetic reassortment, these slides will come, uh, when will come? Yeah, this is the phenomenon of genetic reassortment. Two closely uh, related virus. See, it's not the uh, influenza virus type, it is strain, strain A and B, too closely related influenza A virus. When they co infect a single cell, then the progeny virus may come out with a combination of the genome of both the virus. Could you see here, it is by colored segment, it is showing this particular phenomenon is called genetic reassortment. This is a major event, the entire strand of a genome of two different viruses mixed together. As a result, 
uh, new assortments are produced. And this new assortments always possesses a different character than the original two viruses. Suppose this might be an, uh, a virus of, uh, this is another picture is showing two different virus infecting the same host cell. The progeny virus is having a mixture, different combination. So this process are going on in nature um, almost uh, uh, every day. And out of that, sometimes some of the newly emerged strain become highly adapted to one species and causes severe disease. So that particular species may not be accustomed with this structure and they may not have the antibodies against these structures. As a result, mm, the disease severity will be very high. So this is a natural phenomenon occurring in the nature and uh, uh, because of which probably in the human history we could see uh, different types of influenza uh, pandemics. So this is an, uh, a reassortment, uh, um, uh, how it may occur in the human. As I said, the migratory water birds, free range bird, they mainly harbor the virus. And when they come in contact with the domestic uh, uh, chicken populations, they may release the virus. The domestic uh, chicken may have the virus. And from that uh, human contact, they may acquire this particular virus. This virus may not be at all um, uh, severe uh, disease producing virus in human. But at the same time, as I said, the human also have our own influenza viruses, seasonal flu viruses. So when these two viruses, in fact, this particular human, there is a probability of exchange of genetic element and new reassortant may produce. And this reassortant may become, may become, as I say, the, I use the word may, may become a highly pathogenic in human. So this way, the pandemic starts and begins. Similarly, we, it has been seen that there is another species, it's called the pig pig and the poultry become an excellent um, mixing vessel for emergence of new viruses. So pig may have the human influenza viruses as well as they may get the wild type um, migratory bird virus and it may get mixed up in the pig, new reassortant may produce and it may again infect a human and it may lead to cause of a pandemic. So this is the phenomenon what we call as the genetic reassortment. Okay, so this is quite important for us to understand uh, the genetic reassortment. So this antigenic shifting and drifting, shifting always in the reassortment, reassortment for phenomenon, we will see the antigenic shifting. Uh, this is a small slide just to how to uh, express the influence of viruses. Mm, globally, people accept this particular um, um, way of expressing. Suppose if it is a human isolate, uh, then it will be written influenza virus A, Hong Kong, uh, strain one, uh, the year is 1968, and antigenic type is H3N2. So uh, each and every outbreaks, the virus are characterized and uh, they have been given the name in this way. Uh, somebody may ask you to explain this one. So for that only I'm putting it here. So the last one figure indicate the year, then previous to that is the uh, strain and then the place where it occurred. And if it is in animal, the animal species will be there. And if it is not there, it is mean that this is a human virus. So likewise, it is explained. Now coming to the first infection, avian influenza. So um, shortly we call it a bird flu, but mind it, there was no existence of bird flu. In, in, during our times when we studied the VBS in age, we, we never know at, at that time there is nothing like a bird flu disease prevail uh, in the society. We simply call it avian influenza virus and that was a mild type of virus usually ignored. Even day, day to day basis, even we suffer from some flu, seasonal flu. As I said, out of many viruses, one virus is the influenza virus, but we are not severely affected. But because of this reassortment, sometimes our new strains develop, which causes severe fatality. And it has happened in 1995, uh, the first bird flu virus that hit our country, causing massive uh, mortality in the big uh, uh, poultry farms, okay, uh, the poultry flocks. Like overnight, million, like lakhs of birds, they die in overnight period. 
because of a new SOPN occurred. Now it is uh, considered to be an, a major disease and we should discuss it. Uh, because of large scale mortality, now we call it the uh, Paul plague, uh, plague, the word we use it for uh, explain uh, large scale mortality. And there is no barrier everywhere because the sky doesn't have any barrier. So this migratory bird, they may carry from one continent to the other and that give rise to a uh, new assortment and then outbreaks we could see. So uh, very limited things we can do it. Uh, uh, to, to, to uh, contain this kind of uh, intercontinental transmission. So uh, the recent classification, uh, they describe it under the orthomic zoviridae, genus is alpha uh, influenza virus and uh, causative organism is influenza A virus. This is the species. But as I say, uh, the, the, the influenza viruses are described in terms of its antigenic structures like this highly pathogenic avian influenza H5N1 and uh, as I said in the recent times, uh, the last year what the outbreak occurred is H5N8, probably later on it may come as H5N3 or something like, nobody knows. So it has been seen that any, any of the combinations that contain uh, five uh, antigenic structure of hemagglutinin or seven of neuraminidase are usually highly pathogenic. But these are some speculations only. It cannot be uh, said that every time it occurs. So the influenza viruses are described as low pathogenic avian influenza and highly pathogenic avian influenza. So at present, whatever the uh, bird flu outbreak is uh, occurring in our country, it's a highly pathogenic avian influenza. Unfortunately, there are a certain fatality in human also recorded throughout the globe uh, because of this highly pathogenic avian influenza, H5 and one okay so uh, again i'm repeating out of 18 and 11 n types uh, any combination it may occur right so this slides already we discuss it if you don't understand you can just put questions and uh, there is hope that uh, we can discuss more about it i try to make it more simple form to uh, make you understand about this uh, concept of reassortment Okay, so this is another uh, WHO uh, photos uh, picture showing the uh, avian influenza cases in human. You can see uh, not only the poultry in different continent, the human also get infected. Uh, this become an uh, uh, seasonally every year. We could see after the migratory bird uh, when they comes usually in the winter season. When the winter season is over, then we see this kind of fresh outbreak of avian influenza. Of course, uh, straight away we cannot uh, tell every time that it is because of this migratory bird uh, transmission, but uh, they, they, they take an important role in uh, emergence of new type of virus, okay? So chicken and turkey is uh, most commonly affected. Uh, duck, uh, they mainly act as a uh, carrier, but we, we, we have seen some outbreak in duck also and quails so they are also susceptible particularly the migratory birds uh, they carry the harbor the virus in their intestine and passes into the water bodies and if the water bodies are shared with the domestic duck population then it may transmit to the duck so likewise it uh, comes to the population okay so the mode of spread is uh, through like mm, direct contact because uh, influenza is uh, some sort where the respiratory tract infection takes place so uh, sneezing and droplet infection is the measure way how the disease transmission takes place and so contaminated feed and water also the transmission may occur but mind it that virus is not very much stable in the environment cannot survive for a long period okay so in contact direct contact is important in this aspect Okay. So if you go to the pathogenesis, uh, then you'll find they are orthomyxoviruses. They truly will cause severe inflammatory reactions in the mucosal epithelium, in the respiratory tract, both in upper as well as in the lower respiratory tract. So the alveoli are totally damaged because of uh, sloughing of uh, epithelial cells. Uh, mm, they damage the epithelial cells. And that damage, as you understand, it is uh, not always because of virus replications and it's not the virus they uh, directly causes cytosol death. It is mainly because of the um, uh, exaggerated immune response. 
the inflammatory cytokines are produced at the site of virus replication. So long the virus will persist, uh, these inflammatory cytokines will produce continuously and that leads to uh, severe inflammations and tissue damage occur in the uh, epithelium. And um, beside this, the virus is also disseminated to systemic viremia occur where all the internal organs uh, like pancreas, uh, myocarditis, encephalitis, and all other visceral organs, spleen, kidney, uh, the visceral necrosis occur because of these inflammatory reactions. And the disease itself become uh, so uh, virulent uh, because uh, of multi-system infection, the animal, the bird, they die in no time. Particularly in the bird, even influenza, uh, overnight uh, they die, okay? So one of the characteristic signs is the cyanosis of wattles and combs. This is the uh, primary um, gross lesions that we can see and we can doubt about this um, avian influenza and uh, now we can explain why it is so because of the damage of the lung alveoli the, there is uh, less oxygen and the cyanosis uh, will occur and this is one picture showing how, at the, what intensity it may occur overnight lots of birds will die in a poultry farm so this is really a uh, highly pathogenic um, um, viral infection in poultry. Just think somehow if it get adopted in human, what will be the uh, impact on uh, the on human? So the cyanosis of wattles, combs and sanctaria, these are some of the prominent symptoms of uh, avian influenza. Of course, uh, we learn about the Ranikhet disease, where also large scale mortality, we could see in the highly virulent strain, even the IBDV, but this kind of changes of uh, cyanosis are rarely seen in those uh, cases. So uh, have to be very careful while handling this kind of cases, because uh, during handling itself, a human may get the infection. This is the most serious, uh, 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 matter. So the bird handler may uh, get exposed to the virus and the previous slide what we discussed it if this uh, particular human is having some influenza then reassortment will occur and in no time this reassortment uh, new viruses may get adopted to the human and will cause severe uh, disease condition as uh, we could see in the bird flu, multi-systemic infections. Uh, and it may, it may be disseminated to the mass populations and the pandemic may occur. So that is why even in our country, like uh, the government notification is that if there is any report of confirmed avian influenza, then within a three kilometer radius, we have to call all the poultry just to contain the spread of virus. So that's a very big decision government has taken uh, by giving compensation to the people. Why they are concerned so much? Because negligence may lead to a human pandemic. So that is what uh, we have to be taking care uh, while handling and any cases of avian influenza. So if you had any suspicion, then have to be uh, careful not to handle and perform the post-mortem unnecessarily if we suspect of avian influenza. And uh, the Govt of India has uh, uh, selected uh, the, um, the NISAD laboratory, National Institute of uh, High Security uh, Animal Disease Laboratory located at Bhopal uh, for diagnosis of avian influenza. So none other laboratory is supposed to give any kind of in, um, influenza detections or handling because of this particular seriousness. During handling itself, the persons may get infected until and unless we are having the biosecurity level four, we should not handle the avian influenza cases, all right? So only we have to uh, provide a helping hand to send the samples. And of course, government machinery are, at the, are available for direct help and they collect the sample and send it the other juice uh, sanitary measures we need to adopt it and uh, have to uh, give the proper uh, information to the people about uh, probable uh, seriousness about this disease, right? So this is again a confirmed human cases of avian influenza. There are deaths you can see in earlier time. Uh, so luckily it has not given rise to any pandemic form. All the things has been uh, restricted 
but there is a probability near future we may get exposed to one kind of a pandemic for god's sake it doesn't occur because already we are um, we are in the phase of this pandemic and uh, we realize how much it's difficult for us so coming to the diagnosis uh, of course i'll be discussing about the isolation and identification but uh, uh, let me tell you we are not supposed to go for this kind of process procedure in our laboratory conditions only the recognized laboratory like national institute of virology located at pune niv pune and the nisar laboratory are the two recognized laboratory in india to handle the cases of bird flu but uh, technically if you discuss then it's uh, quite easy by um, growing in the allanthric cavity we can uh, detect the virus and uh, the most uh, rapid method will be the rt pcr test uh, where we can even find out the antigenic structure by doing the uh, um, uh, species specific uh, or the um, serotype specific pcr to find out uh, which type of viruses are there so uh, these are the some information so it's a hemagglutinin viruses when hn based are regularly performed in those laboratory for confirmation hn hi then coming to the prevention and control this information is important for you unfortunately we don't have any effective vaccines to control and contain the disease if anybody asks you why it is so the simple answer will be that we cannot develop uh, live attenuated vaccines because this is a segmented rna virus immediately a new assortment will produce and secondly by the time we'll develop a vaccines and it'll make it available in the market the antigenic structures may get changed what we are speculating for the coronavirus now a newer and newer variants are appearing so if a major events will occur in the genetic structures antigenic structures then the previous vaccinations may not work so usually it doesn't happen much with the coronaviruses but very very common among the influenza viruses this is the reasons why we cannot develop a, a single vaccines to contain the disease however people are working on it to have some um, vaccines specific to the antigenic structures prevailing in that particular area even in case of the human also now the influenza vaccination they are suggesting combining lot many uh, serotypes and these vaccines go on changing time to time the preparation of vaccines depend on what are the serotypes uh, prevailing there and combining the serotypes the vaccines are produced so this is a very grim situation in front of us we don't have any commercial vaccines available for containing the disease only way is to uh, um, contain it by the other measures like uh, adopting the uh, biosecurity and if any outbreak occur immediately we have to go for the containment of that area okay so there are some approaches where inactivated polyadjuvanted vaccines were tried but the simple logic is that uh, uh, every time we need to prepare the new vaccines when a new types comes so commercially it is not feasible to have a single vaccines in the market so recombinant flow fault box vaccines using h5 uh, structures were tried in some countries but uh, not commercially available so the other methods we need to uh, adopt it and some antivirals are there but again in case of poultry it is not at all suggested in case of animal i should say because the cost of these drugs are too high it cannot be uh, meant for giving to the uh, bird okay so uh, this uh, amantidin and rimantidin these uh, are very commonly used oseltamivir that contain the tamiflu uh, brand uh, oseltamivir antiviral um, uh, which are effective against the flu infection in human particularly h h1n1 infection swine uh, flu people take this oseltamivir oseltamivir basically they restrict the encapsulation of the virus within the endosomes as a result uh, the virus replication is stopped so uh,
or um, uh, as an can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In between, there is loss of connection. Yes, sir. When? Did you uh, see this slide? This particular slide I am projecting, prevention and control. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Yeah, you could able to attend this. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Coming to the other two infections uh, very shortly within five minutes, I'll try to finish. Swine influenza and equine influenza. So, you know, like uh, the swine influenza, the stru structure is basically H1N1. However, there are some uh, reassort in H3N2 and H1N2 has also been seen. Uh, but uh, we never have seen uh, swine influenza in pandemic uh, form, okay? So basically the swine influenza get adapted to the human in 1918, that leads to the H1N1 infections, the Spanish flu. Uh, pigs are also susceptible, so mild to severe kind of disease could see in the pig, um, but uh, uh, we could not see any major pandemic in the pigs. As such, the disease is not uh, very much uh, uh, prevalent and seen very commonly among the pig population. But there is a speculation that uh, it may be uh, uh, mixing vessels for uh, emergence of uh, the human strains. Okay, So um, uh, this is basically if it occurs in the pigs is the respiratory tract infections and some sort of bronchopneumonia will develop and the secondary bacterial infections may cause aggravation and death may occur. Otherwise, it is not a life-threatening disease in pig. Okay, similarly, the diagnosis is uh, as uh, we discussed earlier. Uh, here also, cell uh, spectral vaccines are not available. Equine influenza, again, H7N7 and H3N8, these are the uh, uh, strains frequently seen causing the influenza in uh, equine. So in certain continent only, this disease has been recorded. It's not a common infection till now, but we can say later on, it may give rise to some massive, massive pandemics. So um, here also, this uh, clinical symptoms are similar to that of course and influenza, respiratory tract uh, illness may occur, but uh, no large scale mortality has been seen till now. In fact, in before 1995, the bird flu was not there. The avian influenza was a very mild kind of a disease, but the emergence of the new strains become on highly pathogenic and devastation start occurring globally, okay? So these are some of the information about the influenza and I give a uh, lot of stress on this disease and I want that every one of you should know it because uh, this might be an uh, important thing uh, for the mankind also and veterinarians will have to take a proactive role in uh, controlling these infections maybe in near future if it did occur. Okay, if any points are not uh, understandable to you, please text me and send me and so that we can discuss further about it, right? So thank you very much. Uh, again, afternoon uh, from two o'clock, I will continue uh, with another family of virus. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I hope you, that sir. Uh, with the same intensity, we'll join in the evening class. Thank you. I'm closing the link for you now.
Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, after the morning session, uh, this afternoon class, I'm sharing my slide. And uh, in sessions, we are going to uh, discuss about this important disease in the coronavirus. As you know, the present pandemic is a coronavirus pandemic. So we'll try to learn uh, about this uh, particular virus, their nature, and uh, the important uh, disease uh, from our perspective uh, in veterinary uh, science, uh, what are the disease, uh, this particular virus, uh, this group of virus uh, causes, what are the important disease in animals that uh, we'll be discussing, okay? Uh, uh, let us uh, wait for another uh, two minutes, then we'll start. So regarding the morning time discussions on the orthomic geovirity, or maybe the previous uh, classes, if you have any query or any questions, you can ask and <coughs> Uh, can you see the slide and hear me properly? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So I'm uh, setting my slide in uh, full screen mode. Uh, now, uh, please tell me, can you see the slide properly? Hello? Yes, sir. Okay. okay fine. Uh, uh, let me continue with this particular um, RNA virus family. So uh, the morning that we discussed about that uh, segmented uh, uh, RNA virus, the autonomic uh, variety family and the uh, important disease, uh, the influenza and uh, different aspect of genetic reassortment and uh, how the new virus uh, appears time to time because of this reassortment and the role of uh, the animals uh, as well as uh, in creating the, uh, providing the space for generation of new uh, influenza viruses those things we discuss it please go through it uh, uh, from the textbook very properly and uh, we need to know all details about this uh, influenza viruses because uh, this is uh, uh, common issues and every year uh, the bird flu outbreaks we record in our country so coming to the next uh, group of virus it's uh, the corona variety family Right. So the present pandemic is caused by this uh, SARS uh, coronavirus. So this uh, coronavirus family, the meaning of the word corona uh, derived from the word crown uh, is because this virus, they are envelope viruses and they possess a uh, large cloth separate uh, glycoprotein projections what we call as the spike proteins on its uh, surface on its envelope so those uh, spikes proteins are so prominent that uh, on the electron microscopes uh, the the virus appear as if they are uh, the crown of a um, king and that's why this word corona has been given to this group of viruses let us see this particular picture say uh, electron microscopic transmission, electron microscopic picture of the coronavirus, where we can see very prominent, these are very prominent cloud separate lipoprotein uh, projections on its uh, envelope. And as such, this group uh, has been named as Corona uh, Variety family. 
So almost all the members they possess this important uh, glycoprotein projection on its uh, face, and uh, uh, this um, the virus are uh, causing varieties of infections, starting from respiratory tract infection to gastro severe gastroenteritis. Uh, uh, likewise, associated uh, many important uh, diseases of. Uh, uh, animals uh, in, uh, included in this particular uh, uh, family. But as you know, the suddenly this uh, new uh, pandemics uh, where it is the SARS uh, virus appears and uh, not, uh, I should say suddenly, the SARS was there even 2003. Um, then in between other SARS virus appears and this particular uh, become highly adapted to the human and causing severe disease conditions as a pandemic that what we can see. So basically these are uh, the helical nucleocapsid uh, symmetry, the RNA virus, single molecule of the RNA virus, helical nucleocapsid symmetry, and compatibly they are quite uh, bigger genome, almost 26 KB uh, size in comparison to other RNA virus. When we compare with other RNA virus like um, uh, Newcastle disease virus or if we talk about the rabies virus, um, this particular genome is quite big, almost uh, 26 to 30 uh, kilo bases. Okay, so they are the single standard RNA, and uh, they are of positive sense. So when we say positive sense RNA, what comes our mind immediately is that this group of viruses, uh, the virus nucleotide sequence is similar to that of the messenger RNA. So at the beginning when the virus entered inside the host, no transcriptions occur. Straight away, the virus uh, genome can go for translation of protein. That is the meaning of positive sense RNA virus. However, in the later phase of virus replications, when the genomic replications occur, of course, the transcriptions and translations are uh, occurred. So uh, this uh, uh, virus is the example of positive sense RNA virus. So some of the structures are uh, that uh, uh, they deposit they, they an envelope and uh, on the envelope they express some uh, glycoproteins, highly immunogenic glycoproteins, uh, we call as the spikes. These are the glyphosate glycoproteins and the electron microscopic pictures, uh, we can see it very uh, prominently on its surface. That's why they are called as the corona. In comparison to hemagglutin in neuraminidase spikes, these are much, uh, much uh, bigger in size, okay? Beside this, they have the membrane protein, M proteins, and they have some uh, E proteins, uh, which are attached with the membrane proteins, uh, small membrane proteins. So all are uh, immunogenic, but the main immunogenic domain lies with this uh, spike like a protein. As a result, you know, this Covicil, vaccines that uh, many of us we have taken. It is a recombinant uh, uh, spike proteins in adenovirus vector, which has been used as a vaccines and uh, can assure protection uh, in animal. So uh, these are the, sorry, plus is going on. anything? Uh, excuse me, student, just give me uh, just uh, two minutes time. Well, uh, sorry for this uh, interruption. So, uh, this is the structures uh, 
Uh, I guess all of you can see the slide properly. Hello? Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, this is another schematic diagram showing this uh, prominent uh, spike protein on its surface, uh, which are produced uh, during the virus replication and remain stubbed, stabbed or encored to the cytoplasmic membrane of the infected host cells. And when it comes out of the host cells, in the process of budding, they carry it uh, as an envelope. And this envelope, these are the virus coded proteins are highly immunogenic against which the neutralizing antibodies are produced, okay? And in fact, this virus utilizes this particular uh, uh, glycoprotein spike for landing on the cell surface for attachment through uh, this uh, ACE receptors on its surface. So entire uh, RNA molecules, uh, it's a uh, positive chain single standard RNA. So try to understand this particular picture. So I crop it from the Murphy's Veterinary Virology, where you can see, uh, since they are the positive chains uh, RNA virus, uh, the transcriptions uh, doesn't occur. So once the virus enter inside the host cell and encapsidation takes place, the uh, viral genome will give rise to translation of protein. These are the proteins produced as an early proteins. So one of the early proteins is RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, okay? So utilizing that uh, polymerase enzyme, taking the positive chain single strand RNA and negative chains RNA are produced. This is the negative chains in opposite direction, you can see. And the negative chains uh, RNA, genome length RNA, is taking as a template for transcriptions of nested set of messenger RNA with common tree prime. And this is the characteristics of nidoviralis. The coronaviruses, along with the artery viruses, they belonging to the nidoviralis order. Nido, the meaning of nido means nidus or nest. Since they produce the nested set of messenger RNA, this is a very peculiar phenomenon we could see among this group of viruses, particularly coronavirus and artery virus. So artery virality family also, we see similar kind of transcription strategies, okay? So if you, if you, if you closely observe this messenger RNA, which is shown by these arrows, all of them, they are having common three prime in. The five prime in is different. This cracks certain logics of how like a smaller genomic area can code for varieties of protein by viruses. So most of these messenger RNA, they are overlapping in nature. So, uh, but the individual proteins are different. This is the whole uh, reading frame of uh, the coronavirus, where the individual proteins and glycoproteins and non-structural proteins lies here. And with the help of this nested set of messenger RNA, the proteins and glycoproteins are synthesized. So this is the meaning why they are belonging to the nidoviralis group. So uh, shortly, we'll try to know about these um, members of Poderas, uh, many members included uh, under this coronavirus family. So we are interested to uh, mainly to the subfamily ortho coronavirini that include alpha, beta, delta, and gamma coronavirus. So uh, some of the infections like transmissible gastroenteritis virus and feline infectious peritonitis, they are the alpha coronavirus, whereas beta coronavirus include the uh, uh, present uh, uh, COVID uh, virus, that is the uh, SARS virus, severe acute respiratory syndrome virus. So this is a beta coronavirus. Of course, we are having some uh, cattle and uh, pig uh, beta coronavirus, but these are of uh, less significance for us. However, uh, Delta, we don't have uh, um, important member. The gamma coronavirus include the infectious bronchitis disease. So uh, if you let, uh, see this uh, uh, compiled uh, uh, chart of important virus for us, what I mean to say, uh, you'll find the alpha coronavirus include this transmissible gastroenteritis virus. It is a uh, highly contagious uh, gast um, viral disease of pig characterized by gastroenteritis and the common cause of piglet mortality. So this is caused by alpha coronavirus one. 
The another infection, of course, it is not included in your syllabi is a feline coronavirus infection that causes feline infectious peritonitis. Very shortly, we'll mention about it. And then, endemic diarrhea virus, PED. PED is another uh, um, disease uh, which is having uh, a huge impact on the economy, uh, particularly in the pig husbandry practices. Luckily, this disease has not been detected in our country till now. However, in European countries, uh, the disease is uh, prevalent. In some, some of the European countries, it is endemic, but uh, uh, in other countries, um, most of them, they have eradicated the disease, sports and epidemic diarrhea virus. Uh, we'll discuss shortly about that uh, PED virus infection. So under the beta coronavirus, as I say, we are having some um, bovine and canine respiratory coronaviruses, but uh, it is not included in the syllabi. We are not going to discuss it. Another person, hemagglutinin and encephalomyelitis virus, uh, sporadically, the, this is incidence occur in some country. And this is the severe acute respiratory syndrome, the SARS coronavirus. So it is a beta coronavirus. So uh, the, the, the next is that uh, gamma coronavirus that include uh, avian coronavirus infection, the infectious bronchitis. This is a very, very common respiratory viral infection of poultry. And our areas, uh, it is endemic. The disease is endemic. Very frequently, this uh, um, infectious bronchitis occur in poultry. So we're going to discuss about this uh, infection also. So rest in the delta, of course, uh, uh, we are not uh, going to include it. So this is a summary about the subfamily orthocoronavirini that include the diseases of our importance. Oh, well, let's get this to slide. Uh, then coming to the general characteristics of coronavirus. Uh, first thing is that they are uh, the, the, the pleomorphic doesn't have a fixed size, similar to that of the orthomic jaw. Viruses as well as the paramyxo viruses uh, range from uh, 120 to 160 nanometer and uh, <coughs> may appear in different shape and size. So it is an uh, helical nucleocapsid symmetry and it is positive same single standard RNA having 26 to 30 kilo bases is the size. Sometimes we call this virus again the uh, infectious genome. This is a word that we use it with some of the positive sense RNA viruses, like um, this one and uh, picorna viruses. It says that if you purify the genome and somehow you can prospect into a cell by micro injections or by some chemical manipulation, if you inject the genome of the virus, only the genome, not the entire virus, only the genome, if you put inside a cell, then new virus particle will produce. That's the concept of infectious genome. Here also, this is true. This positive sense single standard RNA virus, the genome is infectious. Okay. So having its good protection of capped uh, uh, RNA, polyadenylated tails is present. And the important uh, like spike, membrane glycoprotein, envelope, ion channel, viroporins, and RNA binding phosphoprotein. Um, um, uh, proteins are the important uh, proteins present on the surface of the um, uh, virus. Okay. However, this uh, N protein is linked up with the uh, nucleic acid, not on the surface. The rest other we can see on the surface of the virus. Okay. So um, as uh, they process the large uh, cloth separate peplomers on the surface, and it's uh, stable in the pH range of three to eight. So uh, having a, a good uh, pH uh, tolerance uh, uh, by this group of virus. However, it is uh, heat labile cannot survive for long period. So last year there was a lot of controversy, like how long the virus can survive in the environment. So uh, some study says that in the metal surface, in the cold, uh, shaded area, it can uh, survive for eight to 12 hours, people say. Uh, whatever may be, this virus cannot survive for long. So a close contact is needed to, to for transmission of the disease. That is why probably this uh, maintenance of uh, distance, physical distance is such a state to, to avoid uh, um, contact with the coronaviruses. So uh, in the form of sanitization, many times we could see like um, 
people go on spraying the sanitizer randomly any surfaces but that is not suggested until and unless uh, the area has been contaminated uh, with some viruses so this virus cannot freely uh, remain in the air for more than um, a few hours so uh, those are the facts that we need to uh, remember while understanding the disease epidemiology okay so uh, this is quite easy to propagate the virus in the different cell lines and cell cultures uh, are available including the embryonic chicken egg where the virus uh, propagations can be uh, and then okay so uh, these viruses when they grow it the typical uh, cytopathic effect produces the syncytia formation the fusions of cytoplasmic membrane of adjacent cells take place and that leads to uh, development of syncytia Basically, this viral protein can stimulate the immune system, and you know the main pathology is related to the cytokine storm, where the uh, heavy amount of cytokine persists so long the virus replication takes place, and they cause inflammations uh, in the varieties of organ, more particularly in the lungs, uh, kidneys, and then they can cause severe damages. So, intravascular clotting is another aspect of. Uh, the SARS cor uh, coronavirus infection. However, it cannot be generalized for all uh, coronaviruses in this group. If you talk about the transmissible gastroenteritis or person epidemic diarrhea virus, so the generalized infection doesn't give any importance. Rather, the virus they can causes damages in the intestinal epithelium. Right. So um, this is a um, picture showing how this uh, in the cytoplasm very happily the virus can grow and multiply. Um, the, the, the positive sense of genomic RNA with polyadenylated uh, tails and five prime cap uh, can go for translation immediately without any transcription because they are positive sense and the proteins are produced. So utilizing these proteins, one of these protein is the uh, RNA dependent RNA polymerase. So from the positive sense genome or negative sense is produced. And considering the negative sense RNA, the nested set of messenger RNA are synthesized. And at the same time, the genomic RNA replications also carried out. So when the lead proteins are produced, they are further assembled and through this um, endoplasmic reticulum, uh, again, they are released on the surface. Uh, through budding process. So in that process, they can get this uh, glycoprotein uh, spikes uh, on this surface. So um, here in this picture, the nucleus uh, of the cell is not so neat here because uh, the virus, uh, they never um, go to the nucleus for replication. So independently, they can uh, replicate in the cytoplasm of the infected host cell. So typical of RNA viruses. So those are the, some of the general characteristics of coronaviruses. Now coming to the infection of our importance, one is the transmitted varieties virus, TZEV, shortly we say. So it's a coronavirus infection, uh, very much common among uh, pig, more particularly in the piglet. Of course, all is group of pig, the disease has been seen, but the disease severity is only in the weak old pig, piglets. Okay, and one of the major cause of piglet uh, mortality. So this is a highly um, contagious, I mean, rapidly spread uh, in the populations uh, uh, in the pig and uh, characterized by vomition and diarrhea. So there are only a few diseases where we could see the vomition in pig. This is one such cases where the vomition as well as the diarrhea is the predominant clinical manifestation of the disease. Right. So, mm, in 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 in, uh, in 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 the flock where the uh, first time the disease uh, entry takes place, the mortality may goes up to hundred percent. Okay. Uh, so basically, this hundred percent mortality we see in in a neonatal stage, the very early stage, say one week of uh, life. Okay, so in adult, uh, the mortality is not there. However, it uh, leads to growth retardations because of malabsorption uh, and uh, intracurrent uh, diarrhea that produce in the adult. So that this has been recorded worldwide, even uh, from our country also that this has been recorded. 
Mm, so the causative organism is the alpha coronavirus one. Earlier it was known as transmissible gastroenteritis virus. Uh, either correct, uh, both we can use it. But uh, the recent classification they have mentioned is alpha coronavirus one, the positive organism. The subgenus is Tega covirus and the alpha coronavirus genus. Okay, so that's the etiology of uh, transmissible gastroenteritis uh, virus. So exclusively the disease has been seen in the uh, pigs uh, and the natural host, no other animal species uh, is recorded. And uh, uh, transmission is basically the fecal contamination. Uh, like fecal oral route, uh, the virus entry takes place. And then this virus, they typically multiplies in the enterocytes of so the small intestine and causes villus atrophy. Uh, somewhat exactly similar to that of the rotavirus diarrhea, where we discuss about this uh, viral infection, rotavirus infection in the, and causing the villus atrophy. So here in the three uh, stages, it is showing here, this is a normal uh, villus, in the, um, in the intestinal tract and here it is uh, the destruction of the villi even may lead to gastroenteritis condition and in uh, adults sometimes it causes this kind of uh, blunting of the villi so uh, either here or in this condition both the sites uh, there will be malabsorptions and uh, nutrient uptake will be very very poor in this group of animals so animals suffering from this EB, there will be a very poor growth uh, if the animals survive. Uh, but in the first week of life, uh, in the, uh, if uh, this is hit, then mortality is inevitable. Okay. So at the post mortem, we can see a lot of gas accumulations, and when we open it up, then uh, the foul smell of undigested food uh, are seen in the uh, intestine, small intestine, as well as in the stomach. So. Uh, whenever the virus they will cause destruction of this villi obviously the same pathology we seen in the rotavirus so uh, the milk digestion will totally hampered and the uh, milk protein uh, when they retain inside the intestine for longer period uh, than uh, the undigested food to enter this condition uh, here in other pictures, so of course, many, this is the coronavirus and uh, um, villus atrophy here it is showing. Uh, I'm just uh, focusing to this particular slide. This is the immunoperoxidase staining of uh, the villi where the infected cells uh, the, are taking the color of uh, um, conjugates, peroxidase conjugate. Mm. And uh, this brown color is appearing, indicating that these are the sites where the virus replication takes place. If you notice it that uh, in the subepithelia and other part, there is absolutely no virus uh, detection takes place. So we can say that transmissible gastroenteritis infection is exclusively occur in the lining epithelium. So no generalized and deep-seated infections we could see in, uh, in this particular infection. So it is difficult to generalize the coronavirus as such. So all coronavirus are not causing the severe infection. So if you go to the uh, clinical uh, manifestations and the lesions, so one to three days of incubations can the animals will show the vomitions and profuse watery diarrhea. And because of the dehydration and uh, uh, clinical acidosis uh, develop because of dehydrations and the animal they die. So the mortality in uh, neonatal states may reach up to 100% uh, when TZV hits, okay? However, in adult, again, uh, this is a self-limiting, the mortality are not seen. The poor growth performance is uh, and the frequent uh, on diarrhea is an observation in the adult animal. So for uh, clinical diagnosis, no doubt we have to go for differential diagnosis with other viral uh, diseases, uh, including the bacterial infections where the gastroenteritis occur. So the detection mainly based on uh, antigen and antibody detections in uh, by different uh, immunological test, as mentioned it here, immunoperoxidase, IP, uh, flows antibody test, uh, ELISA for antigen detections, and for antibody detection, again, 
VNT is another special uh, case. So this virus we can very easily grow in the primary pre kidney cell culture or swine testicle cell lines. The virus can be grow, and the typical manifestation is the syncytial formation. Okay, so um, uh, the isolation identification uh, can be performed in all laboratory condition. Uh, however, the rapid uh, detections, we usually go for the uh, reverse transcript test, polymerase chain reaction, RT-PCR test, we can perform it. So, uh, <clears throat> definitely the maintenance of our security and entry of uh, this virus to the farm itself will be a good practice of preventing the disease in farm premises. Uh, however, uh, an endemic area where uh, the, the virus is circulating in the population. So vaccination is uh, 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 recommended. So both attenuated and inactivated vaccines are there in the market, of course, not in our market, international market, in many countries, they go for this vaccination. And exactly the same way, what uh, people do for the rotavirus here also, the sows are targeted. I think uh, you can uh, explain it, why it is so. So since the maximum disease mortality occur in the first week of life uh, in the piglets, so by, by giving active vaccination, you cannot generate any immunity and give protection. So rather we go for the passive immunity. So we target the sows at the pregnancy period and we uh, stimulate them by vaccination so that the uh, cholesterol antibody will give protections in the Pigs in the first week of life. So that is an usual uh, practice to control the disease in pig. Coming to another similar kind of disease, only in one slide we'll discuss it. This disease has not been detected in our country, but recently when government uh, took some proposal to import pigs from uh, European countries, this question arises like um, uh, we have to purchase the pig which are of certified that poor PD is not uh, present in those pigs, okay? So person epidemic diarrhea is another uh, severe um, um, viral infections uh, in pigs of so all age group. Again, here the mortality is maximum in the piglets and the entire story is almost similar to that of uh, the rotavirus and the TZEV where the villus atrophy is the main outcome. So the causative organism is another the subgenus pedacovirus, genus is alpha coronavirus, and the causative organism is porcelain epidemic diarrhea virus. Only one kind of virus uh, detected in this group. So uh, one of the features of this virus is that uh, they can survive in cloned, colder climate for quite a long period, up to 28 days. So the study revealed that in the slurry and the um, drainage and the slurry the virus can remain active uh, till 28 days uh, but uh, it was in the cold climatic regions at 4 degrees centigrade um, so the virus transmissions mainly occur by this uh, fecal oral uh, root and contamination feed and water is the main source so uh, adult animals may carry this virus that is why it is always needed to uh, certify uh, the animal that uh, the flock is free of PD before uh, um, starting this an import of uh, animal from uh, pandemic areas. So the diagnosis is also in the same way. It's, uh, however, it is a little bit difficult to isolate this virus in comparison to the other viruses. Even the rotavirus also, as we discussed earlier, that several passes and trips in treatment is needed for uh, adapting the virus in the cell culture and to get it growth. So obviously the RT-PCR will be the um, test of choice for detection. And for screening the disease, uh, the antibody screenings and uh, serum samples will give us some uh, first in information in an unknown flock uh, about the prevalence of the disease. Okay. So uh, as such, the vaccine is not available in our country. In some countries, they go for vaccination and there also they target mainly the cells, pregnant cells. Now coming to the third infections under the coronavirus family, it's a gamma coronavirus infection. So the infectious bronchitis, as I said, 
infectious bronchitis is a uh, very common viral infection in our area. This is endemic in our uh, country. And basically, if the, we could see the infectious bronchitis virus uh, when it target the young one, severe respiratory tract infections are seen. However, the same virus also infect the adults, particularly the laying bird. Uh, they, rather than the respiratory tract infections, they mainly target the uh, OB duct, and that leads to um, poor quality egg formation in the poultry. So, uh, depending on the age, uh, the, the, the pathogenesis is uh, different. So, it's a highly contagious respiratory viral disease, and uh, the, it's under the subgenus Igako. Igako is the subgenus on the gamma coronavirus. So, uh, altogether, eight different serotypes on the basis of its uh, surface uh, proteins. Eight different serotypes were identified, and they are grouped into two broad categories, Connecticut and Massachusetts. These are two places in uh, USA, and as such, they have been given this uh, uh, two grouping, Connecticut strains and uh, Massachusetts serotypes. And all these eight different serotypes are belonging to either Connecticut or Massachusetts strain. Okay. Uh, this virus, although they have this hemagglutin in uh, property, uh, but uh, uh, as such, the virus doesn't cause hemagglutin. Unless we uh, treat the virus with trypsin and phospholipase C, this cleavage of that hemagglutin is needed to exhibit the hemagglutin in property. So as such, um, if you want to do the HA test, I have to go for prior treatment. Otherwise, uh, the, the test cannot be performed. So infectious bronchitis, if you see the host, then you'll find um, it affects uh, uh, all age group uh, of uh, poultry. As I say, the, in the young age group, one to four weeks of age, they are more susceptible where we could see the respiratory uh, signs and symptoms are more prominent and uh, that leads to the mortality uh, may go up to say 30% or if it is a non-vaccinated flock may go up to 60% of mortality. Okay? However, in the adult, the, the, the mortality uh, rate decreases. So rather uh, in adult bird, in the laying bird, uh, the disease is mainly characterized by um, poor quality egg formation. So it's a respiratory pathogen, so excreted through secretion and excretions and by direct contact by aerosols and contaminated feed and water, the transmissions mainly occur. Okay. So uh, if you see that uh, when this virus uh, initially they can cause the um, um, tracheitis or bronchitis, and thereafter it get disseminated to, through lymphatic tracts, and then uh, different organs are affected: lung, kidney, ovary, uh, lymphoid tissues. Uh, the virus propagation takes place. So in the respiratory um, tract, uh, mainly it causes inflammatory uh, signs and symptoms so characterized by edema formation. And uh, even sometimes the respiratory epithelium uh, gets slough off in the bronchus and the whole bronchial tree. So as a result, the bird exhibit uh, the difficulty in breathing. So most of the bird, they um, breathe by open mouth and uh, even though uh, gasping and sneezing and some sort of tracheal rails are produced, some sounds, whistling sounds are produced uh, when the bird uh, breathes. There is another disease on the herpes variety. We are going to discuss about the infectious laryngotracheitis infection in poultry, where also we could see similar kind of uh, manifestation. This whole in total uh, implies that uh, uh, damage of the respiratory epithelium and uh, uh, lung alveoli causes difficulty in breathing. So the disease also in, uh, causes some um, inflammatory signs and symptoms in the uh, sinuses, in the upper respiratory tract, and uh, the bird exhibit uh, sort of sneezing and gasping, uh, which is an, another characteristic feature of infectious bronchitis. So the, the, the nephritis uh, that occur in the kidney tubules, uh, as we said, that in the um, laying bird, if the infection occur, 
the oviduct cells, the cuboidal cells, um, the columnar cells uh, become uh, cuboidal, and then uh, they they losses their function of uh, uh, albumin depositions and position for formation of egg. Uh, so certain characteristics of soft cell water albumins or uh, sandpaper like appearance on the cell surface are an indication of uh, IB infection in the flock. So these are sometimes helpful in uh, detection of uh, infected bird uh, uh, or infected flock uh, in a poultry farm. Uh, this is uh, some open um, um, big uh, breathing. Uh, this is an caseated mass deposited in the trachea. Uh, these pictures will come later on. Uh, this is some of the misshapen egg, and this is very common. This kind of sandpaper like appearance of the egg surface. Very frequently, we see in the eggs, in the table eggs. Sometimes uh, the soft cell egg or watery albumin. So, in, 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 in uh, layer forms, these are uh, again the negative points and causes severe economic losses. So, uh, this particular virus, look at this particular picture. Uh, this is a normal grown uh, chicks uh, during the hatching period, normal embryo, I should say the embryo of the chick. Uh, and uh, nearby it is the infectious bronchitis virus infected six. Same is group. So this particular change is called as curling and the runting of embryo, which is a characteristic features of infectious bronchitis virus growth in hemorrhagic chicken egg. So again, I'm going to this particular picture here. It is showing how this is normally the embryo is growing in the different age group. Here, they are gradually become smaller and smaller and become rudimentary at the end. So curling and uh, runting of embryo is a characteristic of IV virus uh, growth in embryo chicken egg. So these are uh, important in uh, <coughs> isolation of the virus or diagnosis purpose. So coming to the diagnosis, clinical signs and symptoms, of course, these are not specific for infectious bronchitis. There are many respiratory viral infections where we could see even the bacterial infections like pastorialosis also, you can, you can see some of these common symptoms. So it's depend on the uh, confirmatory detections of the virus or virus, uh, virus specific antibodies in the serum. So we can collect the different organs for uh, detection purpose and Either we can go for isolation in the embryonic chicken egg or in the cell culture, uh, or uh, straight away we can go for uh, detections by uh, taste like uh, simple taste like other specification taste or ELISA. And antibody, we can perform modified HI, not simple HI, because why it's called modified HI is that we need to treat the virus with trypsins or phospholipid C. Only then it will uh, exhibit the hemagglutination property. The second option is the VNT, virus nucleation test, uh, we can perform it. Again, uh, the most easiest and uh, so specific where uh, the, the presence of the virus genome can be detected by specific amplification or uh, target sequences. So this is about the diagnosis of infectious bronchitis. No doubt uh, the differential diagnosis is important with the common respiratory viral infections like ILP, runicates, okay? <clears throat> Even the mycoplasma and uh, some of the pastorella infections in poultry bacterial infection, we have to differentially diagnose it. So uh, we have uh, we we have uh, very good excellent uh, vaccines available in the market, uh, which can give very good protections against the disease. So uh, live attenuated uh, virus vaccines uh, are available, particularly the mass associated type strains are common in India, uh, and these strains are these vaccines are mainly uh, prepared for aerosol administrations or. Uh, to provide for drinking water in seven to ten days old is and after fourth week we can give the booster it can protect the bird for a quite long period so um, this way we can uh, get rid of the infections uh, in the poultry farm as i said that the infection is endemic in our country 
So uh, we should go for uh, this vaccinations in the flock. So these are the um, diseases that uh, included in your syllabi under the coronavirus family. Uh, this is another infection. So I feel like uh, just in two slides, I'll giving the information. Uh, feline infectious peritonitis. This is a highly fatal uh, coronavirus infection in uh, uh, cat. So they occur in the two forms, enteric forms uh, and uh, um, peritoneal forms. So we'll dry and the wet forms. And this is characterized by um, uh, accumulation of fluid in the peritoneal cavity. So it's called as the feline infectious peritonitis, uh, a pot belly appearance that occur in the uh, cat. So mortality may go up to 95% uh, in, in kit, uh, kittens. And uh, this uh, wet and the dry forms uh, are seen. So uh, basically, the virus can cause some uh, damage to the lining epithelium of the blood vessels. As a result, the um, fluid extravasation takes place and accumulation takes place in the peritoneal cavity. Uh, so this is uh, the feline infectious peritonitis. You can read more about it. Uh, and of course, the vaccines are the vaccines are available uh, for giving protections against this disease. So these are some of the coronavirus infections uh, of uh, animals. So uh, three infectious bronchitis in poultry, of course, an epidemic diarrhea and transmissible gastroenteritis, uh, we have mainly focused on these three infections. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have specific questions and queries. Thirty of you have joined it. Okay. Uh, then on uh, witness day one to two, again, we'll continue with another family, artery virality family, uh, that include the PARS infections, um, PRS infections, uh, we'll discuss it. Of course, that infection is also not there in your syllabi, but uh, we should discuss uh, about that infection, since the disease is prevalent in our area. Thank you very much. See you all again. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.